Hey everybody, this is Sheets, and I'm going to be going over my MMA betting breakdown for uh, January 14th, Saturday card. And for those of you that are just joining us for the new year, uh, it's important to understand what we're trying to accomplish here. This is one of the more, this is one of the most fun things I'm doing related to uh, sports, sports betting, DFS, whatever, however you want to characterize it. Um, MMA is a, a, a sport which is really well dominated by the betting uh, by the betting streets. A lot of people bet on the fights. Not as many people play DFS for MMA. And the majority of what I do is MMA DFS. However, I've gotten into the uh, to the betting aspect of it over the last year or so. And it's really no different than any other thing that I bet on, which means uh, betting on basketball, betting on horse racing, betting on stocks, you know, which is what I really do for a living with my hedge fund. What you're trying to accomplish when you are betting on anything is maximizing your edge in some way, you know, and it's very, very difficult because Vegas puts these odds out there, which are usually really, really sharp. And, you know, they, they it reflects the entire sum of the, of the betting public, um, whether again, that be in an MMA fight or uh, to the other extreme to, to a stock, you know, you, you look at Microsoft and whatever its price is for you to be able to say, boy, it's underpriced or it's overpriced. I mean, think about what you're saying. I mean, what you're saying is that the billions of dollars that were already put on the buying and the selling of Microsoft that led it to the price that it is, that it is, is wrong in some way. You know, I mean, if you have Microsoft, and let's say the stock, I don't know, Microsoft trades, anymore. let's say it's 30 and you think it should be 50. Think of the, the intellectual leap you're making there. You know, if it were supposed to be 50, then it would be 50. Right? Like, like people would be buying more of it if it was really worth 50. So it's, it's, it's a very, first of all, it's a very depressing way of looking at things, but it's, it's really the case whenever you have a, a, a market that is so liquid that billions and trillions of dollars being pumped in, reflecting the overall wagering opinions of, of the public, to, to think that you have some incredible edge over that, it requires quite a bit of ego. Um, and, and quite a bit of, of confidence. Uh, and, and the more liquid a market is, and the more money is being bet on it, the, the less likely it is that you can find an enormous edge. Um, that's just the, the way, that's the way life and the law of large numbers works. Um, so when anybody wants to bet on sports for some reason, um, you, you are fighting a very, very difficult battle. Now, that's not saying that you can't bet because there's reasons to wager and to bet aside from just grinding out edges, right? It's fun. You know, it, it's fun to bet on stuff. It's fun to have a sweat. It's fun to have something on the line. And and so it's not, It's listen, I'm not that type of person that said, listen, unless you can have a 0.023 EV edge, then you shouldn't be betting it. Listen, it's fun to do this. And it's fun to, especially with, with UFC and with other stuff, you want to you have a little action on it. I think it's, I think it's, I don't want to say healthy you know, in the wrong way, but I do think it's healthy to have, to have a rooting interest, even if maybe you don't, it's very difficult to get a quote unquote edge on the betting line. But what I look at is as long as you're going to do this anyway, okay, you might as well do your best to generate some kind of an edge. And this is the way I look at it. Okay. I, I don't think that I am equipped to grind into the details of either an NBA game, an NFL game, an MMA fight, or anything, even a stock to some degree, um, and out-analyze the public. Like, boy, oh boy, you know, I have a, like, uh, Sajara Eubanks is minus 240. Ooh, based on my knowledge, of it, this is wrong. It should be minus 290, something like that. Or it should be minus 320, or, or Microsoft is $50, Boy, I think the entire public has it wrong. Based on my incredible deep analysis of the stock, it should be 51 or something like that. Or I, I know the Knicks are three-point favorite over the Nets, but I just know more than everybody else. I just think the Knicks are just underrated, and I think they should be minus four. You know, I'm not that good, and I don't think that many people are that good. But what I am good at, um, and which is well, what's responsible for all my successes, honestly, in 
all phases of gambling is this. If we can presume that the line itself is somewhat efficient, meaning that that there's no inherent issue with the line, meaning that this is the reflects all of the, the betting public's uh, opinions, what you can try to figure out is how much of that opinion is based on psychology and to turn, you know, to coin phrase nonsense, as opposed to stuff that might actually matter. Remember, people when people bet on stuff, they're betting, not everybody's just grinding out, you know, data points. They are betting based on their opinions and their their observations and their feelings. And how much of this line is probably driven, this is the question, by psychological nonsense or bias or things like that, as opposed to, you know, what actually is predictive of the fight. And it's the same type of analysis to to deal with stocks. You know, how much of a of a stock's price is is driven by just people's just impression of the company as opposed to their actual analysis of the company. And if you can get a handle on those types of imbalances, then I think that there is some kind of inherent edge that you can you can derive in betting on all kinds of things. Um, so when listen, when I when I started doing this for MMA. I, I approach I approach this MMA uh, field the exact same way as everything else. And first of all, it's a lot of fun to do it this way. It gives you guys a lot of kind of, I want to say offbeat, but picks that you you might not have come up with otherwise. And so far, so good. I mean, listen, we've only have done it like for eight cards or something like that. But we're way ahead. And it's definitely fun to approach things this way. And I think it will, tr- it will train your, your mind to think about betting uh, in a different way. Now, again, that's a lot of, lot of uh, what you call it, it's a lot of prelim up to this fight card. But as as you as I go through these, you'll you'll see uh, how this all works, and you'll see my philosophies and how they play out here. Okay, so uh, first fight: Priscilla Cachoeira against uh, Sajiri Eubanks. So what's going on here? You you know you have you have. Sajara Eubanks is minus 240 and Cachoeira is plus 200. And the, the impression that we're getting here is that Sajara Eubanks is going to be going for an incredible amount of takedowns. That's her path to victory. And that Cachoeira is probably really, really poor with respect to takedown defense. So this is her path to victory um, is Sajara Eubanks grinding out takedowns, maybe getting some kind of submission. And yet on the other hand, you have Shilla Cachoeira, who, um, and this is what you're you're hearing all over the industry, is you know she 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 takes a beating so to speak. She she has very poor striking defense, but she has that quote unquote dog in her, right? That she's going to keep fighting and fighting and fighting, and if she can survive, say the first rounds or something like that, uh, if she can sur- survive it. She can continue to fight back and maybe get there later. There's actually a fight that I think is still in people's minds where Cachoeira was faced uh, uh, Gina Mazzani, where she got taken down like a bunch of times in the first round. And then the, the then uh, Mazzani just gassed out and, pr- and Cachoeira came back and knocked her out in the second round. I think that that's kind of like the overall perception of where Cachoeira's equity lies here is that Sajara Eubanks is a little older. She's 37 on 38 saying she might miss weight and that she might, you know, might be a classic out too. So I think the Cachoeira, like any prop or any result that catch with Cachoeira in round two or Cachoeira in round three, I think is over bad. Okay. I think that is way too much uh, bias involved in that. Um, I don't think that, I think you're getting equal weight on both win sides, you know, Cachoeira or Eubanks. Okay. So I don't think there's, a lot of you know nonsense going into there, um, but uh, what what I don't see a lot of is just the Eubanks uh, is Eubanks finishing late, okay? Because all I'm hearing is Eubanks wins the first round and then she probably guesses out. So I think where the value here is 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 something that very few people are 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 are, are trying, and that would be Eubanks late. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at either Eubanks by uh, Eubanks inside the distance, or Eubanks in a um, in a uh, specific round. So let's just take a look at this. Let's do um, 
not fight parlays. What are we looking at? Fight props. Okay, here we go. So we could go Eubanks by KO, TKO is plus 450. Win by submission plus 175. But round and method betting. So this is this is really um, uh, specific. You have Eubanks in by submission in round two plus 650. But Eubanks by submission in round three is plus 1,100. Um, that's, boy, that's where I actually think the value lies here. Um, so we're going to take a shot at this. Um, now, again, what I'm doing, I do this every single fight card. I bet every single thing that I recommend. And I bet the exact same amount each, each time. And that is one unit. And call that what it is. It's $180. So... It's going to be one hundred and eighty dollars on every on every fight that I that, and I'm going to I'm going to bet on every one. Um, but I, I'd rather instead of that, I'd rather do it by a round without getting the actual um, method right because I do think it's possible that Eubanks can get a um, uh, like a ground and pound type thing, which would go for a, a KO. So I think that it's between round two and round three. Um, but I think I'm going to go with the round three and just take the shot. So we're going to go round three. We're going to put in 1800 and it might not take the bet right away. Um, oh, not 1800. Sorry. It might not take the bet right away, but um, uh, because of it's, we're connected to zoom, but let's just see. Yeah, I can't do it. Okay. Um, but I promise we will put, we will put these in. Um, after the fact. Uh, it's actually in here, so 180. All right, so moving on to the next fight, uh, Charles Johnson versus Jimmy Flick. Um, let's pull this up. So we have Jimmy Flick, who is kind of like went out of ret into retirement for two years and came out, and what we're hearing about Jimmy Flick is that he's, you know, he's got all this, he's got submission upside. So this is what he does. He throws up a lot of kind of Hail Mary submission stuff and he's very live as far as that goes and literally everybody is coming up with this so the, the last thing that i'm doing is playing flick by 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 submission or or anything like that i think that's ridiculous this is way, i think that that uh, that take is just so common that that just has to be overvalued um charles johnson um so he's had a couple of um of pretty decent performances um uh some pretty decent performances against uh well first he 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 had a really controversial split decision over somebody i forget his name in his last fight um i thought it was close i didn't think it was that big of a robbery and then the fight before that he really had a tough opponent in Melkayev. um so I, I feel as though that the the flick side of the what what i what i feel as though the, the flick side of the ledger outside of submission is the one that's going to be over, undervalued. I'm hearing a lot of talk that that flick has no chin. So Charles Johnson would be able to knock him out or anything like, or something like that. So for me, the two components of this that I feel are just not being uh, approached by the slate at all or by the betting public would be either flick by decision or just flick in general or Charles Johnson um, by decision. Okay, so let's take a look and see if either of these things um, make uh, jump out at us as far as uh, far as this goes. So Johnson by decision at plus two seventy five. I think that's that's pretty interesting. Flick by decision at plus a thousand. That's ten to one. Um, Boy, I'll tell you, that's that's uh that that's pretty tempting. Okay, that is pretty tempting. But I think we're just gonna go with the Charles Johnson by well boy, should we do this? Jimmy Flick by decision. Um no, we we are gonna go with Charles Johnson, um, either by TKO decision. We'll go Charles Johnson by decision here. So Charles Johnson plus 275 against the quote unquote last chin, you know, but uh, you know what? I, I, I think that Charles Johnson hasn't really shown he's knocking anybody out quite yet. 
So he can probably, listen, a lot of different variations. He fights off these submissions, and then next thing you know, he outstrikes him for a couple of rounds, and then he just doesn't finish him. That's plus 275. I think that's very reasonable. So we'll go Charles Johnson to win by decision. Uh, Daniel Argetta versus um, Nick Aguirre. Um, so this is a replacement fighter. Um, and I'm really not seeing too much on either side with respect to the money line. Um, so what we'd like to do in a situation like that is, is look at the, at the particular round prompts. So what I, what I found is that, look, look, so once again, there's no psychology on either side If anything, maybe, I mean, there's really nothing. And I don't want to pass the fight. So what I like to do where I find that there's good value in these things is to play the guy that rates to win by a lot, either in, in a, a manner that he has not won before. In other words, if you have a guy that just can constantly just like submits guys, play him to knock the guy out. I mean, the, the idea being that if he's a big minus five to one, um, he probably can win in any way that he feels like it. So maybe he'll try to do something that he hasn't done before. Um the problem, though, is that you get about equal price, whether KO or by submission. So and also to win by decision. So what we're going to do is we're just going to pick around uh, either round two or round three. Um, pretty much the same thing that we did before. Um, we're going to go Daniel Argetta in round two plus 400. So, again, there's no real edge in this one, but I don't want to, you know, I, I do like to bet every fight. So uh, next, Alan Nascimento versus Carlos Hernandez. Uh, this I I I have not seen a take whatsoever that Carlos Hernandez has a shot here. You have Nascimento, who basically just smothered a guy in his last fight, and they're just everybody's predicting he's going to do the same thing. And the the there's only two ways I'm going to play this fight. Either Nascimento inside the distance, which is I don't think people are playing. People are just going to presume he's going to do the same thing as last fight, which just smothered the guy, or just play Hernandez um, to win. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at it. If I'm going to get um, uh, Nascimento inside the distance at a better price than, say, Car Carlos Hernandez at plus 280, I'll do that. Otherwise, I'll take Carlos Hernandez at plus 280. So let's just take a look. You have... You can get Nascimento by submission at plus 225. That's not that bad. Um, but we're we're gonna we're gonna go with Hernandez. We're gonna take the 280 here. So Hernandez plus 280, and that will be another 180. And again, I just haven't seen this take at all. And it's you know, it's now he's minus plus five hundred, and he's gotta have something. So um, we're gonna take a shot at that plus two. All right, Jared. Basharat versus Men Mendoncha. Um, you're, you're probably supposed to take the shot on Mendoncha here. Um, again, if you look, if you poll a hundred people that are picking this fight, I would say 98 are taking Basharat. And unfortunately, the line is just is just you know it's 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 not that it's like plus minus eight hundred. I'm there. Some people that are taking this dog shot for some reason, and for some, I have not found the reason why. So I'm probably inclined to do the same. Um, again, the only way I would do it differently is 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 maybe take Basharat to just maul him in like say the second round. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to do this. We're going to say either we're going to say what's what's the better price, either Basharat round two, or Mendancha with the uh, plus two sixty. So let's just take a look. Um, First of all, Basharat by KO is plus 450. Boy, oh boy, these are these look really, really juicy. Um, it's kind of crazy. So let's just take a look at some round props. Basharat round two plus plus two five hundred. I almost want to play him round, round one. I mean, he's definitely gonna win this fight. Inside the distance, I think. Maybe, maybe I'm a sucker here, but all right, we'll just try. We'll just we'll just try. Basharat. Um, 
Basharat round two. Basharat round two, 180 plus 500. Um, okay, moving on. Uh, Rubeki versus Fiore. Again, um, you know, I think this, if anything, people are saying that the that he's going to win, but we don't know too much about this other guy. So the odds might be a little wide. We're not sure. So again, same type of thing. Um, what I think I'm going to do here is, is uh, I know what I'm going to do. So uh, I was going to, I was going to suggest maybe Rebecca by KO because he's more inclined to go for all these takedowns, but you're only getting plus 100 on that. So what I'll probably do is just, again, just go for the go for the rounds, and we'll go for either round two. You want to go for another round two? That that'll be the. Let's do this. That's going to be the theme of the night, I guess. Rebecca in round two. Big favorites in round two. May have the other guy just barely hold on. You know, those, these guys are not big KO guys. They're they're kind of like good wrestlers and just just you know, put a pace on them and just walk them, grind them out. And I think the second round is a good time to get these two guys. Okay, uh, Claudio. Oh, this one's easy. So Claudio Ribeiro versus Abdul uh, Razak Hassan. Um, the only thing that we know for sure, this is what they're saying, <laughs> is that. Is that number one? This fight is is not going to last more than two rounds. Okay, these guys are going to slug it out. But I know what I'm doing here because the one thing that I've seen quoted is this: Al Hassan. Every fight that has, or not every fight, but at least most fights that have gone past one round, he has lost. The only fights that he wins are within one round. So you know what we're doing. We are going Al Hassan by decision at plus one thousand. Let's go. We like this. The only thing that I, I, boy, either that or should we just let's see what these round props look like. Oh man, another round two. We can get him at 700. 700 round two. Or by decision. Boy, it's, you know, it'd be so styled to get him by decision. That'd be awesome. All right, let's do it. This is the ultimate way to go through 0 and, through 0 and 12, by the way. But I think all you need, you need is one or two of these to come through. But I definitely think this is the side. Either, boy, should I do both? I can't. I, I stick by my guns. Stick to my guns. Only one one bet per fight. Al Hassan round two or Hassan by decision? I don't know. Well, we'll go for it. We'll go for the 10 to 1 ball. Uh, Al Hassan by decision. Okay, moving on. Uh, Umar Nurmagomedov versus uh, Barcelos. All right, so this one is very, very easy. Um, we've I, this is what I this is pretty much consensus among all the sharps. Barcelos plus six seventy five is that ridiculous? He's like an elite fighter. And I don't care who, who Umar is. I mean, plus six seventy five. How do you not take that? So we are taking Umar. We are not. We are not falling into this trap. The only question is how we're going to play him. And maybe we could play him by decision. Or should we go again for the round two? Let's take a look. Let's see what these guys look like. Round two plus 700. Mm. By decision is minus 200. Huh? Hmm. Nurmaga Medoff, round two, plus 700, or by decision, minus 200. Well, you know, in for a puppy, in for a pound. We're going to keep doing this. We're going to do Umar, round two, get that submission. 
for 180. Well, actually, I forgot to do this one. Here, 180 here. Okay. Uh, okay. Caitlin Vieira versus Raquel Pennington. Um, uh, there isn't a lot here. Um, nobody's been analyzing this fight at all. Just saying, it's just saying it's going to be really boring. That's pretty much it. So, you know what we're going to do? We're going to go inside the distance. Uh, does not finish, excuse me, does not go to decision to lower level, not lower level, but women's women's fighters that do not have a lot of finishing upside. Why not? So we're going to bet that it finishes. So plus 225. That was easy. Some of these are easy, some are not. I'm not saying it's going to win, but that was definitely easy. Okay, uh, Punelli Suriano versus uh, Roman Kopulov. Um, I don't know. I think that there's a decent amount of um, of uh, of recency bias here. Um, I shouldn't say that. I mean, Kopulov is being looked at as kind of a decent live dog here, just because he was like much improved in his last fight. I guess that's the only real real consensus i'm seeing i mean you're not getting you're not getting too much like overwhelming love for soriano if anything what you're hearing from soriano is that boy if he could only if he went to the wrestling he'd be he, he would do it but he stinks you know he's not going to go to it so if anything i think copy is probably getting more of the quote-unquote sharp money or whatever so we're, we're going to just take soriano minus the 150 um unless unless we want to go him inside the distance um, or by a round. But you know what? I think that we've done, we have a left juice. Let, let's let's take Soriano plus the one, minus the 150, just to get the dub. Unless, again, we're greedy. Let's take a look. Soriano, round two. Sor I think Soriano round one would be, would honestly be the way to do this. Um, hmm. Or Soriano by KO. Let's see what that looks like. Plus 150. Well, that's rough. Maybe Soriano by decision. I don't see that one happening. But if I don't see that one happening, how does anybody see that one happening? Boy, this is really this, you know what? We're just gonna we're just gonna go with the minus 150. This one, this one's confusing. Okay, um, just a couple more, right? Okay, Dan Ige versus Damon Jackson. Um, all right, this one is this one is another one that's that's a little bit confusing to me. Um, I have seen a decent amount of love for both sides of this, um, and so there's no real edge to taking either either side of this. Damon Jackson just came off a really big KO win. So I think there's a little bit, there's a little bit of, I was about to say, I think there's a little bit of, of, of bias towards him because he just won this last one and Ige lost like four of his last five. But there's also quite a bit of, of strength of schedule bias in for Ige. And that makes some sense. So I think the overall um, is, is probably, probably fair. And there's not a lot of love on either side to make me think the psychology is one way. But one thing I have seen is quite a bit of, of support for the under two and a half year. Um, so what we're going to do is we're just going to go over 2.5 to over 2.5. The only other way to do it would be one of these guys by decision. So let's take a look at that. I think that, I think that one could be interesting. Ige by decision. Plus 225, that's not so great. So we're going to go over 225 minus the 175. Okay. Um, so that could actually, so it doesn't have to actually go to decision. As long as we get through two and a half rounds, we're fine. And then in the uh, main events, you have Strickland versus Imavov. Um, I pretty confident in this one what i want to do here um so uh 
Strickland uh, is going to be coming at Imovov with a bunch of volume. Okay, he hasn't really shown a lot of finishing upside recently. Um, and he's coming into this on kind of short notice. And you're hearing a little bit about that, that there's, you know, there he's at the gym, you know, he hasn't been to the gym so much. And the thing is, in his last fight, you saw him and he was like, listen, it was a nice workmanlike performance. He didn't win, but he was, he did pretty well. Um, I, I'm just kind of, I just kind of think that this thing finishes. Um, I, I don't think a lot of people are going that way. I think people are assuming it's going to be like a five round kind of volume fight. Um, but the, the side that you real, I think that you really want to play here is probably Strickland inside the distance. Um, because people are, are, are coming up with, with, with ways for Imovov to get, you know, to, to finish Strickland, but not too many the other way, but we're just going to go with inside the distance for this one. So let's just see five props does not finish minus one ten. Plus one ten. So this is this is the e this is the this is definitely the way to um this is definitely the way to lose all your money here. Um and let's go over it. So Jerry Eubanks plus nine hundred um uh in round three. Charles Johnson win by decision plus two seventy five. Um Chet Dan or get around two plus four hundred. Carlos Hernandez, I don't know what this is, plus 275, um, 275. Uh, Basharat round two, plus 500. Rebecca plus uh, 450 round two. Al Hassan by decision, plus 1,000. Let's go. Ramon Gamal, round two, plus 700. Uh, Vieira does not go the distance. Soriano, uh, minus 150. And Damon Jackson over. 2.5 and then when this one wait we don't want he get it's not going the distance so what do we have we have i don't want 11 pick parlays what that so what did i miss hold on oh we have we have to do strickland sorry let's let's, let's look at this again eubanks johnson argetta hernandez basharat rubeki al hassan namaga medoff Vieira does not go. Seriano, Ige over two point five, and we got to get Strickland there. So let's put him in. Just to see what it's going to look like. So Strickland does not go the distance. Stake all singles, one eighty. You're going to be in for. Um, I don't know what this is all about. Why do I keep getting this fight does not go to the. Anyway, those 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 are the those are the twelve bets I'm making. Trust me on that, and uh, that'll do it. Uh, this is a good way to go zero and twelve. But hey, you got all kinds of good sweats along the way, and I promise you this: that you're not going to be on the side of the public in almost any fight. Good luck.